what is the worst thing you've ever heard about yourself? Like I told you, Africans are negative in, in general. <coughs> Ugandans inclusive, but uh, when you apply reason like I do, you come to realize that uh, everything comes at a cost. Why do you expect to be richer than the majority of the people in your society? And you expect them to clap and love you so much? No. It is a natural thing. Hate is part of uh, the human cycle. So uh, 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 instead of you know making me feel bad, hmm. I've learned how to live with it and how best can I use it towards improvement of my in, towards my progress and improvement of the society where I live. So instead of people will always hate you. If you are better than them, regardless of where you are people will always hate you. It is, so the better you adjust your reasoning uh, capacity and, and, and you accept it, hmm. uh, the better you move forward, the faster you move forward. I want to know why agro processing. We export hmm. a lot of raw materials hmm. and import a lot of finished goods at 10 or 20 times the price for what we imported it at. So I was thinking if I can set up integrated agro processing plants, I can add value and look for the demand for agro produce, not just domestically, domestically through import substitution, mm. but also regionally and internationally. That way I would have improved the lives of majority of Ugandans. Mm. Because you see, I'm not going for farming, no. The Ugandans will be the outgrowers. Then I'm staged at value addition. If I can market, if I can aim for the market, specifically moving within the directions of demand and supply, I look for the market, I process and export and bring money back home. Mm. That way I will improve a lot of lives for a lot of households in Uganda. So that is why I moved into agro-processing and value addition. Okay, it was also at my net worth here in the long run. But this time the difference would be, it is not limited to me as an individual, but it is cutting across majority of Ugandans. And I don't expect to do this just in one central region. Mm. Uganda, I mapped Uganda into 10 zones, and I plan to put integrated agro-processing plants in 10 zones of Uganda, if God grants me the life and the time and the reasoning capacity to pull it off. Now all these structures you see right here, okay. the warehouses, they are going to house all the activities of farm agro-processing industries, including cold rooms, packaging, storage, and everything involved. Like here where we are, this is the pilot project uh, Mr. Hamis Chigund has set up for others to emulate and develop our country through agro-processing and wow. value addition okay. on the basis of Uganda being an agro-based country. Mm. Mm. So we are going to stop exporting raw materials and importing processed goods, but rather process everything from here, add value, make quality controls, and wow. only export the excess. Uh, the raw oh, only export the excess. Yeah. That's a good one. Because we have the market <laughs> for everything right here at home. Okay. What kind of products will you be processing in here then? All right. Here we are going to be uh, processing the f vegetables, like the fruits, we, we manufacture juice, the meat, chicken, the, the, the cereals. We are going to put up silos the other place where we, are be, we shall be storing over 500,000 metric tons. We export it. Like the way you, you have been saying, we have had challenges with Kenya that our cereals are low quality. Right now we are, we are going to put everything in perfect mm. place. We are going to we import expatriates here with the one the existing ones who have experience and make everything to world standard. When it comes to the real estate, how, how many buildings have you built so far in Uganda? Do you have numbers? No, I have quite a lot of commercial properties uh, in Uganda, uh, in various areas. Uh, from commercial structures to now real estate housing structures, 
for, for, for residential. Mm. I have quite a number of projects, quite a number. Apart from Uganda, what other countries are you investing in? I have quite a number of properties. I have um, a, logistic, a logistics company in, uh, in the United States trading as uh, Am Express Logistics in Dallas. Uh, I also quite own property in the UK. Uh, I'm quite spread out, but I'm mainly focused and invested in Africa. I read on the internet that you are a self-made uh, billionaire. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah. I also read on the internet that you're being supported by the government or whatever you're doing. That's what I read on the internet, that whatever you're doing is backed by the government. Is that true? Uh, I am an independent individual. Mm. and a private member of the society. Mm. I don't hold any public funds for clarity. Mm. And uh, when you say government, mm. if you mean that the government has put in place mm. the right prevailing circumstances mm. or platform under which a reasonable man like me mm. has been able to exploit the prevailing circumstances like security and freedoms to make it to where I am today, it is 100% true. Government has provided the right prevailing circumstances for me and the people that can apply reason in Uganda to make it big. That is a fact. Otherwise, if there was insecurity here, maybe I would be dead. But it is government that keeps us secure. And it is government that protects us with our properties. Mm. And it is government that gives us the right to prosper without necessarily trying to pull you down. Yeah. I have zero government. I don't have any coin from government. I've never taken any money from government. What inspires you to do what you do? Mere fact that you are living, you are not dead. Struggle is a constant factor for as long as you are alive. When you are dead, everything is done. But for as long as you are living and breathing, you have to keep moving. What else is there to do? <laughs> huh? If there is life, there is everything, right? Yeah, if there is life, because you see, in the initial stages of prosperity, mm -hmm. a man looks for a nice house, a nice car, uh, better ways of survival. What happens if you're no longer limited to survival? You can drive the car you want. Uh, you can live in the biggest house possibly you can afford. Then what? You still eat one plate of food. Hmm. You still drive one car at a time. You can still stay in one house regardless of what you possess. Hmm. So, what then? How many Africans have what I have? There are very few. Yeah. So, the best I can give anyone who watching this show right now, the best anyone hearing us now, listening to us now, yeah. is how can I kickstart your reasoning capacity regardless of where you are, you see, it is never too late to reason. I'll give you an example of our education system. Mm. Majority of Africans have gone through education systems and now they are they all PhDs, they are professors. But have you ever asked yourself why are the most educated people of our society the least outside rich or wealthy? Wealthy in our societies. Yeah. Just because you see. By nature and character, mm. in Africa, we've been told that uh, you should draw the difference within the zone of perimeters. You should draw the difference between knowledge and wisdom. Professors have acquired a lot of knowledge, knowledge. with ability to articulately pass it on to others, but with total inability to practically apply it 
towards their own progress and prosperity of their societies. Reasoning is key. It is deep, critical analysis of the prevailing circumstances without necessarily fronting personal emotions and desires. Because you see, with reason we do what is right. Hmm. With desires and emotions, we do what we desire. Africans are taken up by short-term desires and emotions, not progressive reasoning. I think people need to have a copy of this book because we've been talking about reasoning. So I would say that the secret behind your success is reason. If I've managed to make it in Africa, yeah. where everyone believes conditions are very poor, that means I have managed to reason out a difficult situation in Africa. Maybe if I was in America, I would be the richest man today. Because I would apply my reasoning capacity within the prevailing circumstances then. Here in Africa, all systems are down. In America, systems are up. Someone can wake up and become rich, rich uh, from something as small as, you know, people liking uh, something very funny. Exactly. You put something up, people like it, and you're up because the marketing strategy is there. People have access to information. Uh, you know, the book is the written. systems yeah. present for someone to make mm. it already. But here in Africa, we are still in manual, analog. <laughs> Everything there is fast. It is modern. And you don't think that is the reason why so many Africans cannot break through that system? But for us to make it as a continent, it shouldn't be limited to, to just individuals like we said. But reasoning must be evident within all our structures and systems, including our government. If you have the chance to change one thing in Africa, what will it be? Our reasoning capacity. The reasoning capacity of Africans. Reason, and you see, reasoning is simple. Simply being open-minded is an element of reason. Open-minded. The ability to take in information. When someone is talking to you, that ability to take in information and analyze it before mm. you can act. That mm. is an element of reason. Mm. Believing in yourself, that is an element of reason. Mm. Being patient yet consistent with what you want. That is an element of reason. Never giving up once you fall. That is an element of reason. Taking personal responsibility. And you say, you see, I owe myself the responsibility to make myself better and the society where I live. That is an element of reason. You, you don't wait for anyone to come and carry you forward. You, you don't blame government for your failures. You don't blame your parents for your failures. You simply adjust the fact that, look, if I have anyone in the world, I have me. Then how do I better my life? You know, that alone is an element of reason. So, success or failure are a mere reflection of our reasoning capacity. So, if we could attack the F African mind towards reason. I think that's the best thing that can ever that, that can ever happen to Africa. In Africa, funding a project is very difficult. Yeah, I interviewed a, a, a one of successful man in Ghana, and then he told me that he actually got the money from his friends. How I made my money, I'll tell you the story. Hmm. Because I was on the, on the street for some time. Yeah, it toughened me up, right? So just imagine you being on the street for some time with, with guys, you, 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 and then getting a formal employment. That's easier. Easy. <laughs> because I have friends now. Yeah. So in the morning, oh, Charlie, you, you brought, uh, you brought um, Kenke, I'll come and eat. So when I, when I joined the Valco, we met Susu. Susu. And uh, I think, Susu that you made, you take all the money this month. Mm. It's for you. All, 100%, right? The next month okay, is for this person. person. And this man, so I was the last person to take it. So I think about the seventh month, 
I took I said, the money. That's how I get the money to be trading. That, that is the story. And that's the money that I had to today hasn't left me. And not that I had money from a loan from anybody. That's the that, money that, that I had. That's the money? I had, that I had. You know, that's how I've nurtured it from, from that time to this time that money has never left my hand. What was the first money that you received for your first business? The first capital to start your first ever business? My family background is business. So I come from a business family. Wow. So it is from that background that I started working with small substantial capital. Mm. Not too much capital. Actually, too much money is not capital. Then you can't make it productive. Mm. Capital is that little amount of money you insert in a business with on a probability of losing it or gaining more, which I call a risk. Mm. Then it starts multiplying. The multiplier effect is what translates into. into actual success and progress and prosperity in the long run. So a constant engine, a constant productive engine is what makes a person wealthy. Where can we get this book? Uh, in Uganda you can get physical copies, okay. but on the internet you can get it from Amazon. Amazon. Both books, Success and Failure, based on reason and reality, and reason as the world masterpiece. Four, I believe there is nothing above reason. And if there is anyone who can successfully challenge me on this, please, you are most welcome. I think reason is above everything when it comes to human progress or failure. Reason is the governing factor. Okay, in, lay, in a layman's language, I would say it all starts and ends in the mind. You're building a 40-seater, 40 40,000 capacity stadium. Yeah. In, right in the middle of um, the city of Kampala. Yeah. And when I got there, I saw only black engineers. And I was amazed because I've never seen anything like that before. Because anytime you see any big construction going on, we tend to see either the Chinese or maybe the whites surveying everything. No, but maybe when you look at the stadium, how many Africans have built a stadium like I've done? Maybe I may be the first or one of the few. What I've done in its totality as building a stadium, it is an illustration to my fellow Ugandans and Africans that look here, even for massive projects like this one, we can do it ourselves. And I've made sure all the people I employ, all the engineers, and everyone on the stadium is totally, absolutely, completely Africans. So I'm trying to show them that look here, we can do it. If I've done it, you still can, you can do it. Let us put our hands together and make sure we build Africa. For it is our obligation as Africans to build Africa. If we don't take that on us or responsibility upon us, that it is our obligation to build Africa, then Africa shall never devolve. When you talk of an investment or investor in Africa, it's synonymous to a foreigner. But that is what we are trying to change right now. We are trying to show everyone that look here, yes, we can develop Africa as Africans. This is our identity. This is our, we are defined by who we are. We are Africans. Africa as us. And we have Africa. So, we leave it for, who will develop Africa if we don't take the responsibility upon us to build, to, to, to build and develop Africa? We have limited ourselves to mediocrity and, and, and uh, for any big projects you look at in Africa, it's either done by the West, by the Europeans, by the Chinese, yet they have the same red blood like we are flowing in our veins. We are humans like, like them. We can actually even do better than them if we address our minds to reasoning. And for me, I've decided to stop talking about it and illustrate. Maybe talking may not be convincing enough within perimeters of reason that look, it is possible for us to make it. That's why I wrote a book, Success and Failure, based on reason and reality. For reality is what it is, as you see it, not what you want it to be. How many people have you employed? Currently, I employ close to 
4,600 employees directly under me, and they're all Ugandans. The stadium itself is living proof that I've done it. Because you see, a stadium is something communal. Me and my family cannot accommodate and utilize the stadium. This is something communal. Yeah. Success and failure are based on reason and reality. It's a realistic fact that this one is present. It's a realistic fact that it's going to be used by Ugandans and it is a reasonable fact that it is a communal stadium. You do charity work? Yeah. What kind of charity work do you do? Depending on the prevailing need and circumstances. Like there was COVID, I came through and uh, gave 500 million to the community to buy drugs for vaccination. So it depends on the prevailing circumstances. We are going for Ramadan. I have already bought a lot of things I'm going to give to different mosques and people communities to undo their fast. When you hear the name Africa, what comes into your mind? Africa is blessed with a lot of natural minerals. Africa is blessed with energetic people. You know, Africa is blessed with everything apart from inability for us to reason on how to exploit and explore the prevailing circumstances and available resources to us towards our progress and prosperity as a continent. The only missing factor in Africa is reason. Otherwise, God has blessed us with everything we need for us to make it. It will be unrealistic and unreasonable for any African to blame that we are not blessed by nature, to blame God that we are never blessed by nature, for we are fully blessed. If we can only reason out on how to explore and exploit the prevailing circumstances and resources we hold at hand towards our prosperity as a continent. You made it in Africa, but an ordinary African is saying that it's not possible to make it in Africa. But that statement from a reasonable perspective is wrong. How can you say that it is wrong, it is, it is impossible to make it in Africa, yet there are Africans that have made it? It is defeated by reason and reality. Uh, you see, that is exactly what I'm fighting. Inability for Africans to believe in themselves. If I can do it, you can do it. What is the difference between me and you? We all have the same time in a day. We have 24 hours. I don't have any difference. What do I do different from you that has made me prosper? and has kept you in the state you are at. For me, I think it is all about, it's all in the mind. It all starts and ends in the mind. I have a lot of Africans in the diaspora that watches my videos. Yeah. If you have a message to them, what would that message be? No, Africans go abroad looking for better, better ways of survival. And majority will tell you they go for everything, which is a fact, but uh, I can give an opinion on what it is in Africa today. Maybe majority have left because of the prevailing circumstances like our weak education system that has made them believe you can only make it abroad, not in Africa. Like I told you, these are imported and imposed education systems that we are never drafted realistically to meet the challenges and prepare the African child with the equipment to articulately analyze and understand the challenges at hand and forge corresponding solutions. Mm. Maybe one of the biggest problems Africa has is our education system. Because you see, we are born Africans, but it prepares us into modern Western slaves, if I can put it articulately. Whereby by the time someone is leaving university, all they can think of is go and look for better resources abroad. And maybe that's why you have a majority of people living ab abroad. So if qualified engineers, qualified doc doctors, qualified nurses are all living in Africa, how is Africa going to grow? Maybe we should start believing in ourselves, our origin. I think most of them are also living because the systems in Africa don't really work. You're an African, are you an African? Yes. 
So why don't you first believe in the fact that you are an African? Identity is an element of reason. Understanding your identity is an element of reason. Mm -hmm. Saying I'm by the names of a Miss Chugun, I'm by such and such an age, I am a black man and I'm an African, and what can I do to improve my life and the lives of those around me? So, does running away from a problem solve it? No. Uh, if I'm looking for modernity, I should go look for it elsewhere. Have you solved the problem? No. Actually, you've moved to society that you're not, you're a foreigner in that particular society. So, and majority only the accounting, you're not even a citizen, you don't even qualify. That is why I decided to do the White House in Uganda. Let us struggle or strive towards achieving our desires in our motherland. Instead of struggling and striving so much towards leaving our motherland. I know majority live because of different prevailing circumstances. I don't want people to get me wrong. But from a reasonable point of view, that is a personal opinion, which may be a fact or not depending on the reasoning capacity of the reader, on the, on the reasoning capacity mm. of the person listening to me. Mm. But that is my opinion. Within perimeters of reason, self-identity is very key. And taking personal responsibility is equally key. So, whose responsibility is it to develop Africa and pull it forward? Is it for the Westerners, is it for the Europeans, or is it for the Africans? So if all the Africans are leaving Africa, whom are they leaving Africa for? To all my fellow Africans and the world at large, to everyone listening to me, My message would be, if you get a chance to get hold of my two books, Success and Failure Based on Reason and Reality, and Reason as the Old Masterpiece, I would advise you to read it. For I'm not trying to tell you how much I've achieved, but how can we kickstart each other's reasoning capacity to make sure we make the world we live in and the African continent a better place.